All right, church, thank you for checking in. We're in Mark chapter 11, continuing this series. We are moving slowly through chapter 11, but I've told you often that it's going to be a long chapter with a lot in it. So uh, today we're just going to look at, at the, the lesson of the fig tree. We already looked at the fig tree once, but Jesus teaches a lesson based on it. Um, he says, truly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. So it's a pretty well-known little statement of Jesus that if you pray with faith, you can say to a mountain, get up and be thrown into the sea, and it will. And that's, you know, that's quite amazing, of course. Um, But he says it within the context of talking about forgiveness. Did you catch that? Um, He says... um, and whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone. So I believe that it's a general principle that you should pray big, miraculous prayers. I talk about this fairly often, of course. Um, but I also believe that there is something specific about a prayer of forgiveness. Um, I think that Jesus is going for that. Um, because honestly, one of the hardest things to pray is forgiveness. What's the biggest mountain in your life? Um, there's probably many, uh, but Jesus, of course, is always going to be more concerned about mountains of sin and mountains of spiritual resistance in your heart than he is about just tangible little flesh and blood miracles. For him, for him feeding 5,000 people out of a basket is nothing. For him, walking on water is nothing. Raising the dead is nothing. He says, little faith, little faith. Faith the size of a mustard seed can do this stuff. So let's talk about the big stuff. The big stuff is in your heart. The big stuff is sin in your heart, unforgiveness and resentment in your heart. Um, The big stuff is that. And and I say this also, it's in Matthew 18, um, when he says this as well, a similar statement. He says, again, I say to you, if if, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. All right, well, right in the midst of that, that's sandwiched in the book of Matthew, between two statements about forgiveness. If your brother sins against you, that's I'm in Matthew 18, verse 15. If your brother sins against you and you um, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone, if he listens to you, you've gained a brother. And he goes on back and forth about how to deal with sin and forgiveness and how to overcome sin in someone else's life. And then he says, if two or three of you gather together, ask uh, anything on earth and I'll give it to you. And then he tells a parable about an unforgiving servant. So both times, in Matthew, when he makes this really dramatic statement about a prayer with faith, and in Mark, where he makes a similar statement, in both cases, he then immediately references forgiveness. In both cases, the parable of the unforgiving servant in Matthew, and uh, in Mark, it's just very brief, but if you have need forgiveness for anybody, so um, you need to forgive them. And, and that matters, all right? Pray the big prayers. Let's pray revival. Let's pray that this vaccine mandate never comes to pass. These are two major issues that we're praying for right now, revival being the biggest of them. It would dominate everything else. Let's pray big prayers. Let's pray for the major issues in your life, your, your relationship with your adult children that's broken in half, the, your uh, problem that you've got. Let's pray those prayers. But... Let's look at the inner stuff as well. Jesus always wants to point you back there. What's the sin in your own heart? It's really easy to just to deal with the sin on the external level, deal with, deal with the issues. Oh, help me get a job. Oh, help my car to run. Oh, help my kid to straighten up, whatever. Um, those, those, those prayers are almost easier. The real stuff that matters is going on inside of you and in your heart and the way you're treating one another and the the thoughts and actions of your mind and your, your lifestyle like that. All right, you, you can pray a big prayer all day long, but if you've got unforgiveness in your heart towards somebody, if you don't love your enemies, that's an actually a bigger mountain. That's, that's what Jesus is getting at here. Look, you throw the mountain in the sea, yeah, anybody can do that. If you need a tiny bit of faith, a mustard seed will do that. That's easy. That's, that's what he's saying. It's easy. Of course you could throw a mountain into the sea. Whatever. Who cares? That, that's not the big deal. 
But look, when you stand to pray, forgive. Make sure you're forgiving. That's the real issue, buddy. Mustard seed faith can throw a mountain around. All right, and just historically, a little footnote there. Um, whoever says, uh, truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea. Like, he's, he's talking about a specific mountain, um, this mountain. And presumably at this point, if I'm, if I'm reading this right, he is probably at the Mount of Olives. This is on the way from Bethany towards Jerusalem. Um, this is, they're at the fig tree that's withered up, which was on the way. So he's, he's either pointing at the Mount of Olives or he's pointing at the Temple Mountain. Um, this mountain, either he's talking about the one he's standing on or the one he's pointing at. We don't know. It doesn't make a ton of difference. But we do know that, um, that Herod, sorry, my phone is buzzing. Um, I don't know if you could hear that or not. But we do know that Herod moved mountains. Like, he actually moved mountains, uh, excavated them, and moved them around and stuff. That's a thing he did. And whatever mountain Jesus was on or pointing at would have been seriously moved around in the time of Herod. He, he totally redid the Temple Mount. Um, he And the, the, the Kidron Valley in between that and the Mount of Olives, all of this had been moved. And Jesus is like, look, people can even do that. A little bit. A mustard seed faith can throw a mountain in the ocean. Who cares about that stuff? And those are the things, those are the mountains that we see in our lives. God, change this. Do a miracle. Do a total turnaround. Change, move the mountain into the sea. Oh, God, help me with this thing. And he, you know what? He does do miracles. And you need to pray those big prayers. Pray for the impossible. If it's possible, just do it yourself. Pray for the impossible. God can do the impossible. All right? But... But the bigger issue, the bigger issue, yeah, have, have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown in the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes in what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. That's a prayer. Say to the mountain, but you're praying to God to do it. Okay, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, talking about prayer, like I said, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father in heaven will also forgive you your trespasses. So when you're praying for the mountain to move, make sure there's forgiveness in your heart. Make sure that you go forgive. That's what he says. You want the big mountains to move? Start, start with the mountain in your own heart of, of unforgiveness. And that would, that would branch out towards love your enemies Bless those that persecute you. Pray for those that persecute you. When you're praying for the mountain to move, say, God, forgive me for having an enemy that I hate, that I don't love. Lord, God, give me a love for this person. Throw my mountain of hate into the sea and replace it with a mountain of love. Do that. When you stand praying, forgive. And then keep on praying about the mountain. All right? This is a word for our time. It's a word for all of us at all times. You want to pray big prayers to God. God wants to, to totally overhaul your heart. That's what he wants. He wants your life to be aligned with him and not just name it, claim it, health, wealth, prosperity, uh, all this. God just wants me to have a happy life where I'm healthy, where I never have any needs and all this blessing stuff. That's not really in the Bible. You have to stretch to get that. What God wants is, is you would carry a cross up the hill. That's, that's what he wants. You're not going to carry a cross up a hill if you're just pointing at the hill and saying, move, move into the ocean, I don't want a hill. No. <laughs> like, yep, a mustard seed faith can do that, but so much more important, so much more important is your heart posture, your lifestyle, your mindset, that I refuse to have any kind of bitterness against anyone, that I'm eager to, to bless the ones that persecute. That, 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 that's what I would want. That's what Jesus did. He forgave him while he got on the cross. He carried that cross up the hill. Not because he had to, not because he, he, God couldn't save him. Mustard seed would have saved him. Faith, that's not the reason.
The reason is he chose to because it was more important, so much more important for him to give up what he wanted, to give his life, to save others. And then he says to follow him. All right? So let's forgive. Let's love our enemies. Let's pray for revival. Let's pray for the mountains to move. Let's pray for total transformation across our whole nation, across our world. But it starts, starts inside. It starts with you. It starts with love your enemies. It starts with forgive freely. Freely you have received, now freely give. All right. God bless you. Short little episode today, but um, it's so important for us. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I'll talk to you some more tomorrow.